Thank you for joining us. This is Saeed with the latest on what's popping. Right now, I'm at City Hall outside of a press conference being held by Youth United for Change, where they're presenting their new reports on the policies about zero tolerance in schools. And this is a pressing issue that is affecting youth daily and everyone else in the long run. So let's go inside and see what's being done to address this issue. On January 13th, Youth United for Change released a report to make people aware of the issues that the zero tolerance policy poses. The report shows that many schools are becoming like prisons. When we've become too reliant on pushing the problem onto someone else, which only fuels the dropout rate, which in turn has a devastating impact on all of us, resulting from higher rates of crime, homelessness, and unemployment in our city. What are some zero tolerance policies in school? So, I mean, the big one that people talk about, of course, is weapons, and that seems to make sense that you won't want weapons in your schools, but one of the things that's funny and kind of crazy about that is how broadly we define weapons. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a state law that says weapons are anything capable of inflicting serious bodily injury. Say somebody bring a butter knife to school, but it's accidentally in your bag. You can get expelled for that. Zero tolerance just relies on out-of-school suspensions. And, and rather than working with the kid and improving their behavior in school, just getting rid of the kid. And, and so it has a really bad Im impact on kids' learning and on parents. It hurts our economy. Those kids who aren't learning aren't graduating. They're not graduating. They're not getting jobs. And they're, they're, they're creating a drain on our whole society. It makes us feel in prison in school. Like, people should feel safe in school. Students should always feel safe in school. But when you pay almost $50,000 a year on school security guards and like such things as uh, metal detectors, then what are, what are you really spending your money on when it comes down to like school psychologists? I'm saying class trust maybe, even like any, anything that can, that can help the school be better. Like they ain't, they ain't, they're not gonna spend money on pay mediation and stuff like that. They wanna spend on 55, 36 cameras. You know what I'm saying? Like for small schools, it's not, it's not, it's not helping us. It's making us feel in prison. The school district of Philadelphia appears to be among the very worst districts in the country for sending its students to juvenile and criminal justice systems. Blacks and Latino youth were taken into police custody the most. Students of color are punished more often than their peers for the same behavior or receive more severe punishment. The zero tolerance policy is affecting younger and younger youth. And finally, you can read about the first one, a six-year-old kindergartner who was accused of inappropriately touching his teacher at a charter school. At his expulsion hearing, his teacher explained that as she sat down to read a book with her students, she complained that her legs were hurt. Six-year-old Christopher patted her on the thighs and said, I want to make them feel better. Christopher received a permanent expulsion, the most serious punishment available to school. Uh, some alternatives could be restorative justice. And what restorative justice is, it's basically like alternatives to like second chances for kids. They sit down with students, they, they work out their problems before they escalate into bigger problems. Another one that's, that we're big fans of is something called school-wide positive behavior support. So where everybody in that school is on the same page about encouraging students and, and promoting them in their positive interactions. And through that we've seen that students are less likely to do negative interactions. Without restorative justice, people are locking away their problems. If you are sending someone to jail for something that they do to school, you're not helping. You don't know what the real problem is. You don't know why they're doing what they're doing. So you don't really know what's going on. So they'll get out and they'll just keep on doing what they're doing. You're not helping doing anything. So what they can do is do peer mediation, sit in the circle, like have um, the victim and the offender together just like talking it out and take procedures just to talk it out instead of taking drastic measures. Because everybody has problems, everybody makes mistakes, but it's the way you deal with those problems that's affecting everybody and the way, the school, and the way students feel about going to school. Thank you.